Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but in five minutes, I'm going to show you an amazing trick for painting birch trees that is going to blow your mind. We're going to use some fun tools today, and the techniques are all beginner friendly. Now, I am painting on a 9 by 12 canvas. I am taking out my cool materials. Check the description if you want to know exactly what they are, and I'm starting with a damp sponge. This isn't a wet sponge. This is a damp sponge, and I am using a dry brushing sponge method. Notice that I pull the sponge across the canvas from right to left. I'm not pressing hard with my fingers. This is a light pressure technique. You really have to keep your hand light to get this cool scrapey effect. You're gonna love what it does for you. I'm gonna grab some black on a round brush and come in and make some random lines. Just make them random, not too many, not too few because nature likes to be random and you can be random with us today too. If anything bothers you in your canvas, remember you can go back and add a little bit of white or fix any boobs that happen. This is important. Dry your canvas right now and make sure it's completely cool before the next part. I'm using three inch painter's tape. This is a low tack tape that is three inches wide and I'm putting it down vertically and burnishing with my hands. You got to burnish so the paint doesn't get underneath the tape. I didn't have two inch painter's tape, so I'm using one inch washi tape. Not only does that have a fun message, but it lets me get a two inch wide strip pretty easily. Again, I'm burnishing down with my fingers. You can adjust these uh, really easily. Just remember that the widest part of your trunk is at the bottom and the narrowest part is at the top. So you wouldn't want your tree to widen at the top. I'm burnishing these down, making sure that they're positioned in a really good way so that the next part is easy for me. Again, burnish. Stay with me, burnish. It's a very important part of the technique. I'm going to take white paint and I'm going to paint all over the top of the canvas that's exposed. It's okay if you get some paint on the tape, that isn't gonna hurt anything. Now I'm gonna dry thoroughly, that's important because I need a layer to hide the black and white markings underneath. I'm using a very light white and blue at the bottom and a number a one inch oval mop brush that's soft. And I'm really putting it down here thick. I'm really trying to cover what's underneath. You might need two coats. You might need three coats. You do a darker blue at the top. And this is going to create an ombre from the top to the bottom. You can totally do this. The trick is to make sure that the light part of the bottom and the dark part of the top are still wet. So they blend together beautifully. You can go through a couple times. You can come back and add a little white at the bottom. You can come back and add a little darker blue at the top. It's what works for you. Dry thoroughly and get a bunch of Q-tips bundled together in like numbers of five. I'm going to come in with my red. And that's why the paint needed to be dry so the blue didn't get up in it. At the top of the canvas, I'm going to make little bunches of leaves. Uh, you like irregular shapes. You want to pull them through the spaces that are not taped. Um, and that's the thing to keep a, be aware of. Like don't paint the tape because that's going to go away in a minute. I'm going to paint the red across the bottom adding little bits of branches and bits of leaves that are popping out between the trees because in our painting, they're three-dimensional. I get another thing with some yellow and I'm gonna come in and let the colors mix on the surface. The red is wet and the yellow is wet. When they get together, they make orange. Notice I don't paint away all my red. And I like to keep the yellow to the outer edges of the leaves. That's just a nice effect that helps it feel more like fall, more like autumn. And I'm ready for autumn and fall. I hope you are too. You can come back with more red. If you need to add depth and you want this to completely dry because the next part is nearly magic, remove the tape. I like to remove the tape the opposite direction and placed it down on and look at these trees just ah, coming out out of nowhere. Isn't that fun? I know you're going to love this. Okay. So that's a lot of fun. I'm going to get some more Q-tips and I'm just going to go yellow and I'm going to wrap some of these leaves around my trees because again, even though this is a fun painting, they're still three dimensional. And so I want to kind of fill in the top and come around and hug them and make sure that everything is super cozy because fall is nothing if not cozy. I'm going to continue the little yellow cascade of leaves at the bottom and then come back with some orange. And we are letting the Q-tips again mix the color on the canvas. So that's a fun thing that you can do. If you need any Q-tip tips, remember to watch that first video. That's a super important thing to do because there's lots of extra tips there. I'm coming back with some red to add depth under the bottom. Anywhere that the leaves need it around the trees at the top, just creating a real sense of these three birch trees being really special fall trees. See how the 
stuff can layer up. I've now switched to a bundle of three. Three is a great bundle for Q-tips. These are a lot of fun, and I want to be able to see you every day at 10 a.m. for a new five-minute lesson. These are really easy, beginner-friendly. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye!